What is up guys? Today we're going to be talking about crypto. Specifically, what is crypto and how can you trade it and benefit from it? Disclaimer, this video is my opinion and I'm not your financial advisor. This video is not financial advice, so please don't take it as such. Having said that, I'm going to tell you the golden rule of how to make money in crypto and pretty much any other form of investment. Do you want to know what it is? Make sure you listen to the entire video so that you don't miss out on any of the details of how to do this. Now you've probably heard the word Bitcoin and you've probably heard the word crypto and you may even have heard that prices are skyrocketing again. And then maybe you heard recently that China has banned it again. What is going on? You may also have heard that our friend Elon Musk is now accepting payments for Teslas via Bitcoin. But what about Dogi? What about Doggy? Doggy? Dog? Is that a coin or is that a pet? What is that? Isn't that a cute dog? What on earth is Dog Doggy Coin? Okay, let's be serious here. Today what we're going to cover is what actually is Bitcoin and crypto? What is the big deal? Who cares anyway? Where can you actually trade crypto? Why you should not buy Bitcoin? That's right, I'm telling you, don't buy Bitcoin. And most importantly, you're going to learn how you can make money with crypto. And what is my opinion on Dogecoin? I'd like to tell you a quick story. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, when we were in the Stone Age, there was a system of bartering. So basically we'd trade eggs for straw, or maybe some milk for some chicken, or maybe some pieces of wood for something else that we had. It was a little bit messy. So eventually we came up with a slightly better way of doing things, which was called money or coin. Eventually we became a little bit more organized and countries built up stores of gold and their currencies were based on the amount of gold they had in storage. This idea though went out of the window last century when countries essentially decided that they would print as much money as they felt like. Ding, 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 ding. Wow, is that the most crazy ringtone? Wow, I need to get a new phone. So back to money. There were a bunch of friends who formed a bit of an exclusive club. It was called the Banks. The Banks decided between themselves to set up a network that would allow people to use this network to buy and sell and move money around the world. And this network still exists to this day. In case you're wondering, my name is Nasser. I've been an online entrepreneur and a property investor for over 20 years. This channel is about helping you to lead a more healthy, wealthy and productive life. Let's talk about Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is a digital currency. It's a digital form of paying for goods and services that was invented back in 2009. But unlike government issued currencies, there's no single entity that issues Bitcoin or controls the transaction. Before Bitcoin, it was not easily possible to make electronic transfers without a third party, like a bank or a payment process. And payments subject to delays. So if you wanted to send money from, say, the United Kingdom to Outer Mongolia, I've got nothing against Mongolia, it's just an example, it may take you days or sometimes even weeks. And you also have to pay the fees of the banking system. To solve these problems, Bitcoin works on what's called a peer-to-peer -peer system where you are sending your money from one location or a wallet to a different location or a different wallet. The way to think of Bitcoin is really one giant spreadsheet or ledger. In this spreadsheet or ledger, we've got a record of every single Bitcoin transaction that has ever occurred. Early on in Bitcoin's history, there were very few transactions being processed. But as time went on, more and more people started to use Bitcoin. And so the number of transactions to be processed increased and eventually the Bitcoin network needed to be upgraded to be able to, ma to, be able to maintain the speed of transactions, cheap, fast and reliable. Over the last decade, Bitcoin has become more and more popular. People are starting to say that maybe Bitcoin could be the currency of the future. You can already pay for many things using crypto. Recently, I was updating my chess.com subscription. This is not a plug for chess.com. I'm an okay chess player. I'm not any kind of chess master. Um, but I, as you can see on the screen here, I was looking and I found that, wow, it's actually possible to pay by crypto. And this wasn't around too long ago. So why is Bitcoin so controversial? Well, in essence, there are four main reasons. Number one, the speculation bubble. Firstly, Bitcoin and pretty much all crypto is highly volatile. It's a rapidly expanding market. To give you an idea, Bitcoin was initially valued at around $1 back in 2009. Time of recording, it's close to $50,000. Even if you put in $100, just think about how much that $100 would be worth right now. December 2018, Bitcoin lost 84% of its value. In 2020 and 2021, there were months where it lost over 50% of its value in just one month. 
Imagine that happening on the stock market. That would be absolutely crazy. It would send the world into a tails. Check out the video. The link should be above here somewhere on why most people lose money trading crypto. You'll really benefit from the lessons in there. For me personally, when I look at Bitcoin, I think of it as a very speculative investment. As I said before, I'm not here to give financial advice. But that's how I would approach it. Number two, the environmental impact. Bitcoin is controversial because of the energy consumption and environmental impact that that potentially has. You have millions of computers around the world being used to mine interesting work that's required to create Bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies. Number three, security issues. We are always concerned about security. When internet banking first came out, everyone was wondering, is it safe to have all your banking details online? Well, Bitcoin and crypto take this to a completely different level. We now have like wallet IDs, we have exchange accounts, we have different stories of these. I strongly suggest you look at the security behind how you set a crypto account. I think you should look into 2FA, MFA, two-factor authentication, multi-factor authentication onto your account. If you're gonna be sending your money, strange wallet ID, be very careful and send it in chunks. So send it half or a quarter, Make sure it gets there, then send the rest. Never ever send currency to a strange wallet that you don't know anything about. That was a reminder, if you can smash that like button and hit the notification button as hard as you can, it helps my channel and the YouTube algorithm. Number four, off the grid. So this is where it gets really controversial. When it comes to the normal banking system, it's quite easy to trace where the money's come from and goes to. Now with crypto, things are very, very different. The advantage is we don't need to rely on the banking system anymore. It is faster and cheaper. If you're part of the criminal underworld, you can send money around crypto wallets without any trace at all. And that obviously can pose challenges when thinking about money laundering and criminal activities, etc. So it really is a double-edged sword. Oh wow, that's another annoying ringtone. Wow, I need to do something about that. So where and how do we trade crypto? There are so many choices out there. In a nutshell, what you need to do, convert your fiat or normal currency into crypto. You can then transfer your cryptocurrency into different wallets on various exchanges. Number three, once you have the funds in the relevant exchanges, what you can do is then buy and sell the crypto that you are looking to trade. Let me show you a really useful website called CoinMarketCap. Here you can see the top coins by market capitalization. Coins are listed on which exchanges. Now I dropped the bombshell earlier. I think you shouldn't buy Bitcoin. What did I mean by that? As before, this is for edutainment only. Yeah, I think that's a word. Bitcoin is the big daddy of crypto. It's the most stable. It's also the one that tends to grow the least. Now remember, due to the wild fluctuation, I think of crypto as being highly speculative, as I've said before. I'm not surprised if my investment loses thousands or tens of thousands in a matter of days. Let's look at these two coins. Bitcoin is around $50,000. It's up around 400% on the year at the time of writing. Ethereum is around $3,500 and it's up around 1,000% time of recording. There are other coins, and again, I'm not gonna give you recommendations. The point I'm trying to make is, if I'm gonna be investing in crypto, other coins that are just as safe maybe, and that will have just as much or more growth. So how can you make money with crypto. My friends, I've been trading and investing for over 20 years. There is one and only one golden rule. You're really not gonna like it. Are you ready? Here it is. Invest for the long term. The sage of Nebraska. And from a young age, he knew he would be rich. I could figure out when I was 10, if I had a fairly long life, I was gonna end up with a lot of money. Buffett made money in decades, not in minutes or weeks or months. So that's maybe an extreme example with Warren Buffett because he is very, very old now. But let's take an example of Ethereum. Now, $3,500. I will think about selling it when it gets to $35,000. I may look at portfolio once a month, not once a minute. If you look at the longer term, you will, in my humble opinion, hugely increase the chances of your profitability and your long-term success. Thank you, Michael. Well, Call now- me the Doge Father. Uh, okay, Doge Father, so- yeah! Personally, on Dogecoin, the Dogecoin, I bailed. I didn't like it anymore. What is Dogecoin? Well, it actually started as a joke based on an internet meme. The, you know, it was actually a joke coin to begin with, as, as Elon has said, and it wasn't behaving in a way that I was happy. So I bailed. Sometimes you have to make a decision. Now, it's important that you check out two videos. The first one is, why stop losses do not work. That's right, they do not work. And the second one is why everything is your fault. You read that right too. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you again soon.